welcome to the Filipino Heritage Month of June 2024. Welcome to our launching of our seventh year. It is with great pleasure to see you all in joining to celebrate the Filipino Heritage Month this June. Let us take a moment to remember that Filipino culture and contributions and the contributions of the Filipino Canadians in Canada. Let us also honor our Filipino heritage and recognize the immense achievements of our kababayan. Allow me to mention that Panday Tinig has made a milestone of this kind of achievements. 40 years! Could you imagine that? 40 years of existence and still serving not only the Filipino community but other diverse community as well. I wish to thank our dignified guests. As I mentioned, we have Marvin Rutran, who is the father, the father of the motion that created this Filipino heritage in June. Very significant that he's here. And I would like to also to mention that we have um, Elie Israel, the chair uh, also from the school board. Uh, the English School Board, eh? English Montreal School Board. We also have Pierre Bourregan. Pierre Bourregan is uh, from the um, Universal Peace Federation. And um, he's been active there and is, uh, um, what do you call that? His, his, um, his mandate with the Filipino community is to make a good relation between the UPF and the Filipino, Filipino heritage. So, let us, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention Orlan Narcacho. Yeah. Orlan Narcacho. He's the pioneer, the old serving uh, member of the Filipino community. When I just arrived here, he's already established here with his own uh, tindahan, yeah. his own sari-sari store. Yeah. And uh, furniture. And furniture. Yeah. Oh. Filipino furniture. Yeah, that's right. You know, you malalaking kutsara, tinidor. <laughs> you know, if you want to uh, get that. Orlan, thank you for coming. <coughs> Great. So let us all come together to celebrate this special day. Next thing's gonna happen is we are uh, going to cut the cake. A cake. Kala ko wedding eh. Kamaingay niya Ricardo. We are gonna cut the uh, ribbons. It's gonna be a uh, what we call them um, a cutting ceremony. And I would like because I wish everybody could be all behind the ribbon for for hopes, you know. But um, let me uh, allow me to invite, of course, Marvin Marvin Rotran to the will cut. <coughs> El Israel. Eddie? Very well down <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I forgot to mention uh, Lilies Guerra, my God, senior moment here from Amon Institute, and also Bing Stopa, president of the Teachers Association. Nida is here. Nida, Nikki, Benaki, Nikki, the president of Farmers. Tenny is here. All right, Tenny, come forward, come on down. So this will be the people who will be uh, uh, cutting the ribbon. So uh, Ami and Edith, can you? Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby declare officially open. June as Filipino Heritage Month in Montreal. Yay! 
<laughs> so today we begin a month that has taken a flavor of its own and enthralled Montrealers and Quebecers and Canadians since day one. As I believe uh, Aditha said at the beginning, this is the seventh Filipino Heritage Month in the borough of Cotonej NDG and the city of Montreal. But it's only the sixth Filipino Heritage Month in Canada. <coughs> now why is that? I'll tell you why that is. It's because Filipinos are proud of who they are and on a very, very cold night in February of 2018, <laughs> When my motion came to the Borough Council calling for every June to be recognized as a Heritage Month, nearly 300 people came to a hall in NDG. Not even here in Cotonej, where most Filipinos live in this borough, but in NDG to show their support for the motion. How could the councillors not say yes? They looked at the audience and they counted the people and they were almost entirely Filipinos and it was the coldest night of February that year. It was really cold and we still had 300 people and some of them couldn't park nearby. Parked three, four, five blocks away so they would not miss this meeting. And they kept on saying, they were very polite, they were fidgeting because it was the second to last item on the agenda and they had to wait and wait and wait. Nobody left. They waited until the item came. The room erupted in a cheer when the council voted that motion. And June of 2018 was the first Filipino Heritage Month in Coltenej, not the Dame de Grat. And it's appropriate that it was in this borough that it started. Why? There are 40,000 Filipinos in Quebec, and almost half of them live in this borough. And a lot of them lived in Snowden, where I represented, the rest live in Darlington, today represented proudly by a Filipi person of Filipino heritage, Stephanie Valenzuela. And by the way, that Stephanie is the first Filipino person elected to office, not just in Montreal, anywhere in Quebec, at any level of government. It opens a lot of doors for a generation coming up behind her. It gives us the impression that anything is possible. Uh, the Heritage Month has been well done in Montreal, perhaps best of anywhere in Canada. There are nearly a million Filipinos now in Canada. They represent almost 3% of the Canadian population. That's one person in 33 in Canada is a Filipino. And they have contributed mightily to the well-being and support and growth of this country. Canadians should have a debt of gratitude to their Filipino neighbors. They have come as immigrants. They put down deep roots. They built families. There's a new generation. In fact, there's another generation behind that now born in Canada. They bought homes. They're good citizens. They vote. They listen. And they contribute. They have made our country better. And as such, Canadians have much to learn from the Heritage Month. Now, I told Al when he got started on this uh, years ago, you're going to have to build slowly because there are a lot of groups who do their own events. We have to find a way to coordinate, and we have. The best thing now is people don't do this events on the same day. In other words, on June 12th, there aren't going to be 14 events on when the parade and the uh, Independence Day is celebrated, which will be June the 16th this year because it falls on a weekend. It's going to only be one event in the park and not two or three. Everybody's got together. So the main thing that the Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal has been able to do is to get everyone to talk together and to ensure that the month will be well organized and successful. And it's been amazingly successful. Look, June 12th is Independence Day. Filipinos are proud of that. Independence Day did not start in 1898. That's only the day when Emilio Algonado was on the balcony declaring the independence of the Philippines. And that began a long struggle before independence was actually achieved after World War II. It took almost 50 years to become fully independent. <clears throat> independence started when Jose Rizal stood up and said, I believe in racial equality, I believe in brotherhood between men, and I believe all nations should have amicable relations. Now we all know that Dr. Rizal is the national hero of the Philippines. We all know that he was executed by the Spanish for treason. 
his crime was dreaming, dreaming of a better future, dreaming of equality. The Philippines was the first nation in Asia to decolonize, to say we want our independence back. Dr. Rizal was Gandhi 40 years before anyone had ever heard of Mahatma Gandhi. Dr. Rizal is a great man, a hero of humanity, not a hero of Filipinos, a hero of humanity because he said you are my brother regardless of what your skin color is or what your racial or religious origin is. He was a man who believed in tolerance and cooperation and he launched the struggle for independence. June 12, 1898 is only the declaration of independence and it's a day that the Republic of the Philippines cherishes and it's a day where we all reflect on the bedrock principles of the Republic of the Philippines because it's based on what Dr. Rizal said. The Philippines is one of the most vibrant democracies in Asia. That's why there's so many parties arguing with each other in Congress in the Philippines. That's why there are so many people who go and vote in the Philippines. They have the highest voter turnout in all of Asia, one of the highest in the world. Filipinos believe in their democracy and their democracy has to do with respect of others. You don't have to agree but you have to give them a voice and a space to be heard. I invite you to take part. The event in the park is vital. Why? Because it's not aimed at Filipinos, it's aimed at every Canadian. Come and learn about your Filipino neighbors, their vibrant culture, their music, their dance. Learn about their cuisine. You know, you get the best pancit noodles and the best lechon you can possibly have. Come to the park. And Montreal challenges the rest of the country with how many events there are and how many people go. There are now nearly a million Filipinos in Canada, as I said. And most of them don't live here in Quebec. They live elsewhere. All right? If it wasn't for Filipinos, Winnipeg wouldn't be much of a city. If it wasn't for Filipinos, Edmonton wouldn't be doing too well. All right? Same thing could be said for Vancouver. And did you know there are over 200,000 Filipinos in a small town down to 401 called Toronto? If you go to Scarborough, it's like, it's like a Filipino city. All these places have the ability to do Filipino Heritage Month. And guess what? They do. They do something. But none of them do it as good as Montreal. All right? So I'm going to thank Al Abdon and the Heritage Society for its work because it is a lot of work and these people are not paid, they meet regularly and they get the job done not for themselves, for everybody in the Filipino community and everybody in Montreal can benefit from it and learn about their Filipino. Thank you again to Pande Tineg for what you do and thanks to everybody in the community. I'll conclude with the word Mabuhai. In the Philippines, when I was growing up, this was my time. After the national anthems, before the school began, kailangan yan, nakakanta tayo kami lahat ng national anthem, lupang hindi lang to remind you of the title. And then followed by Panatang Makabayan. Panatang Makabayan. Hindi ko ang the man if well if uh, a lady of interest was there you know they would go in the homes of these young women at night moonlit night and sing to them so we'll start with some serenade this time for all of you, okay? And we will start with the Tagalog. Um, yeah, pwede na. Ilaw. Oh, ilaw. Yeah. Only by the men. Siyempre silang nagkakana. Harana is serenade, okay? Okay. Yeah. Oh, ilaw.
that it can follow the flight of a song. Yeah. You know? yeah. Long, long afterwards, you don't know, I found the arrow still and broke. And this makes me so emotional because it's happening me with my kids. And the song, from the beginning until the end, I found again in the heart of a friend. Okay? Yeah. So this is how it was translated from the folklore into the present Cebuano people singing the song. Philemon is 
It's just a made name. It's just a made up name. Philemon. There are so many Philemons in the Messiah's region. And he is a fisherman. Although they say feed the man one a day at a time, a fish. But if you teach him how to fish, he will fish and feed himself for a lifetime. But this is a different meaning. Because Philemon is just fishing just for a living. And then what happened is of all the beautiful fishes, he caught the lowest kind of fish. It's a salamander, we call it. It's a, it's a water hopping fish, tambasakan. He has, well, we are famous in Bohol. We are famous for the big eyed monkey, the Tarsius. And these fishes have their eyes outside of their body. It bulges out. That's why they call it murakad mata o tambasakan. It means when you open your eyes, the world brightens up. So, and then after he catches the salamander, what else would he do for a living? He sells it. And where? In a makeshift and dilapidated marketplace. And what would he have for the fish? It's just enough. For what? Our favorite pastime, drinking tuba, which is our native wine. Wow. So, we will sing you the song, and every time you hear the song, don't remember about Philemon. Don't remember about the fish, but remember what happens on evening when the Simuanos sit on the front of their houses, by the store, in the corner of the street, the city, and drinking tuba. That's <laughs>
they participate in all the activities. Well, you know, Sarumbang is very popular in the Philippines. And I have a little notes here that uh, Sarumbang is Bicol region's signature well ballad. And arguably one becomes its most popular pop song. And literally, Sarumbangi means one night. Listen to the story. Huh? Well, Sarumbangi uh, tells about, I mean, uh, it's, I mean, some encounter between Rastra Bikurano and a lovely provincial maiden. It goes like this. One evening, a man lying in bed heard a bird singing. He thought that he was just dreaming. So he got up from bed, opened his eyes, and in total darkness, he looked around. And what do you say? Voila! A beautiful maiden looking at him. So, so to everybody, I leave this story for you to continue whatever you like to continue. But um, there are some highlights about this Sarumbangi. And did you know that in 1947, LVN Film Production <coughs> has a film regarding Sarumbangi. And you know who are the starring people? <coughs> Rogelio de la Rosa oh. and Mila del Sol were the oh. starring roles. Oh. And also, this is very important, this is just recently that I came to know while I was doing some research on the internet that uh, this month, June, and this year, it is 74 years ago that the ever popular Zarumbangi was sung at the opening of the United Nations General Assembly in 1950 in New York. Isn't it a coincidence that we are seeing Zarumbangi today? The launching of the Filipino Heritage Month in Montreal. Wow. So, maybe it's a, it's a continuation of Sarum Bangi, we may be able to compose a song titled Sarum al -Daw. What is Sarum al -Daw? Instead of Sarum Bangi, which is evening, and Sarum al -Daw is one day. So that's how it is. Bangi is evening, and al -Daw is daytime. And this happened during the term of General Carlos P. Romulo, who was the president of the fourth session of UN General Assembly from 1949 to 1950. Christine. What? This is something even for me, 
just came to know about it. So some sort of uh, history about Sarumbangi. Now, the song was composed in May 10, 1910, by the noted musician Potenciano Gregorio of Lidbo. Now, now they call it Santo Domingo in El Bar. He arranged the song for a band in 1918 that was performed by Banda de Bo, that's the musical brass band. Now, because of its growing popularity, Gregorio also arranged for the symphony orchestra in 1930. So, now, Potenciano Gregorio became a member of the famed Constabulary Man under Colonel Walter Loving. And he was named to represent the band to the San Francisco World Expo in 1939. Now, on this event, and on this way, unfortunately, he died of near morning. So, now, I'm going to render to you the Sarum Bandi. Okay, yes. Yeah.
ini datang. Uh, orang kacuas ya? Oke. Okay. Have you learned something about Philippine folk songs? Yes. And now you will appreciate what you hear sometimes, not really composed, but passed on from generation to generation and written by the well-educated musicians of the Philippines. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your enthusiasm. It is so exciting. We have a series of events coming this June celebrating the Filipino Heritage Month. Next coming is on June 7th will be a mass 
for the Heritage Month at St. Joseph. Start at 6 o'clock uh, 6 o'clock p.m. And um, we wish that all this is open to all congregation, even to the different religious groups. So I hope you will be there. This is our third event going on, and we hopefully that we're going to invite everybody to attend this celebration. At isa pa, June 15, Changian. Changian will be held at St. Kevin's. That will be, uh, it will start around 11 a.m. to uh, 4 p.m. Lots of, um, uh, lots of uh, merchandise, lots of uh, mga tindan, alam mo naman ng Changian. And there will be also some live performances by the local artists. And of course, nandiyan na ang Philippine Independence Day celebration with their parade and a whole day event uh, uh, sponsored by or created by or which is uh, organized by the Council of the Filipino Association of Quebec. Hello, my name is Jeanette Pirignon, the Secretary of Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal. Uh, on behalf of the Society, I'd like to thank the donors of the food, namely Pico from Norte and Victoria, uh, Pancit by Baby Castillo, Laing from Papa's Restaurant, Crispy Delicious Chicken from Lovejoy, and uh, MC for $25 worth of food. Raquel Trinidad for Bilo Bilo. Ami Manonog for Afritada. Feli Bizarres for sandwiches and fruits. Becca Aguilar for some more fruits, uh, ch cherries and uh, croissant. And uh, Reverend uh, Orlan Rocaccio for the drinks. And uh, I guess that's all. But uh, we really thank you so much. It uh, was instrumental in the success of this event, the launching of Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal. Bravo. Please don't forget to support our donors. Their uh, main um, instrument of our uh, Filipino uh, cuisine. So please don't hesitate to visit their restaurants. Thank you very much. Have a good day. First of all, I would like to thank the following sponsors. Nam nagbigay ng ng sample ng kanilang delicious delicacy. Nagumpisa na ang Papa's Restaurant and um, ang uh, Love Joy Chicken. Nagbigay rin ang um, Norte sa new restaurant along Victoria. They have delicious food. MC Restaurant is also one of the supporters of the Filipino heritage. They have delicious food and um, uh, all kinds of diversified food too. And um, also, um, namely, I have to mention Baby Castillo, who donated a tray of pancit. And um, I would also um, uh, thank the, my, the staff, the directors, the administrators of the Filipino Heritage Society of Montreal for uh, assisting and helping uh, to organize this event especially the um, the um, especially Edith Fedelisu whose uh, concept of this was tremendously accepted and um, um, re uh, commended by the uh, community of um, the viewers here in Famas. Repres ko, no? I would like to I would like to mention that Adida Fedeliso is the one who made the concept on the team of the Filipino Heritage Society's launching this June 1st. He really did, she really did a good job. And also the guys and the people who works behind us, you have seen that Berta Vieira did a lot of job and some of the staff who's been cleaning setting the table, setting up the banners, 
taking down some of the um, posters and of course the food uh, people who really uh, make the uh, delicious meal for the delight of the guest. Uh, I would also like to, uh, to thank the effort and um, the um, creativity of Trisum Film. I saw a lot of, um, of production that he did from different organizations. It is superb. I suggest that um, you watch it thoroughly and understand the community with his shows. Also, next time I hope you can also visit our website www.filipinoheritage.ca Mabuhay! Oh,